In this video, we're going to take a few minutes to talk about a few of the applications of Henry's Law. Henry's Law is the law that uh, controls uh, the solubility of gases on liquids. Okay, so uh, when we were defining here Henry's Law, uh, we were saying how it applies to the solute component of ideal dilute solutions, and the solute component is the one that is in minority. Okay, so uh, essentially here you have what Henry's Law is. It really is telling you the following. Look, when you have something that is uh, in minority in the solution, its concentration actually depends on the partial pressure of that minority component on top of the solution, right? So again, this will be the concentration of that minority component in the solution, right? And that is the partial pressure of that component on top of the solution. So if we come to this type of uh, diagram, right, and see how this would apply for a gas dissolving into a liquid, what you have is that uh, this gas on top of that liquid, if you apply pressure to it, if you increase the pressure of that gas uh, uh, to some extent, then you're going to be able to dissolve some of that gas in the liquid. Okay, it also, uh, this, this doesn't have to be a gas, but it could actually be uh, also a liquid, a volatile liquid, but for the applications that we're going to review in this video, we're going to be concentrating on gases and how they dissolve in, in liquids. Okay, so one of the clear examples of uh, Henry's Law at play would be the idea that uh, when you think about nature, there's, there's bodies of water throughout, you have oceans, you have rivers, and of course the atmosphere is, uh, uh, has some components, some natural components to it, for example oxygen. Right, so whenever you have your oxygen uh, on top of water, what happens is that uh, a little bit of the oxygen dissolves in the water according to the Henry's constant for that oxygen. This is useful to fish and to aquatic life because oxygen is needed inside the water so that uh, natural processes like metabolism can take place. Fish need that oxygen to be able to uh, burn fuel and, and power themselves. Right? So again, the amount of oxygen that you have dissolved in oceans and rivers that is controlled by the Henry's Law uh, of, of oxygen. But of course this applies not only to oxygen, it applies to any gas that you have in the atmosphere. So for example, it would also apply to CO2, right? Uh, and of course with industrial activity, we know that in the last few years, the concentration of CO2 in the atmosphere has skyrocketed. And what that means is that now we actually have more CO2 dissolved in uh, aquatic, in, in bodies of water throughout uh, the world than we did before. And that is troubling for one reason. When you put CO2 in water, you have this equilibrium that generates carbonic acid. And of course, carbonic acid is a weak acid. And what that means is that it can dissociate uh, through equilibria that you, ha you would have studied in general chemistry and analytical chemistry, uh, protons plus hydrogen carbonate. But these protons make uh, the waters a little bit more acidic. So we actually know that the pH of the ocean and rivers has changed as of late uh, by about 30 percent. Uh, has uh, actually decreased by 30 percent, and that seems to be causing some problems with um, uh, um, natural species that are sensitive to, to pH, like coral reefs and so forth. Okay, so again, that is Henry's Law at play, uh, at play as well. There are other places where Henry's Law uh, is also controlling the solubility of gases and liquids, and for example, that is in uh, scuba diving, right? So. When you go underwater, you need to have a breathing apparatus, a scuba apparatus, to be able to drive gases through your lungs, right? So underwater, you have hydrostatic pressure that is pushing you in. So uh, if you breathe uh, air under ambient conditions, then you would not be able to inflate your lungs. So you actually have to deliver uh, air or oxygen uh, at higher pressures. So you can actually uh, drive that, that air through your lungs, right? A problem though is that uh, when you breathe air at high concentrations, what you're actually doing is you're affecting Henry's Law, right? So the amount of gases that you're going to have dissolved into your body are going to change. And uh, when you breathe air, you're not only breathing O2, you're also breathing nitrogen. And nitrogen has a Henry's constant that is uh, quite high for fatty tissues, right? That means that when you breathe in air, there's a little bit of nitrogen that is accumulating to the fat of your body. 
and body tissues are, are uh, there's many of them, right? So you have actually your joints, uh, uh, those uh, uh, can uh, uh, absorb quite a bit of nitrogen, your brain can also absorb, absorb quite a bit of nitrogen, and there's a couple of problems with that, and that is that uh, nitrogen at really high concentrations is actually a narcotic, okay? So, so you can actually become disoriented if you breathe air at high pressures, because again, uh, when it gets to your brain, and it dissolves there at high concentrations, it's a narcotic, and that can be troubling. Okay, there's a problem uh, with breathing air at, at high pressures as well, and that is that uh, uh, when you uh, rise from the bottom of the ocean or whatever you are underwater to the surface, then what happens is that the pressure is changing, right? Uh, so what that means is that then the concentrations of those gases that you have dissolved in your body uh, have to lower because again the partial pressure is changing as well. And what that means is that all of the gas that you have dissolved in your fatty tissues now has to come out, right? Uh, and that can be extremely painful, right? So if you rise really, really, really quickly, then there's a rushing of that nitrogen that you have dissolved in your in your joints and in your brain uh, out. And there can be bubbles that are formed of that nitrogen, and that is actually excre extremely painful. And it can actually kill you, right? So. Uh, when it comes out of your joints, uh, you get something that is called the bends because people double over in pain, uh, or it's also called the compression syndrome. And then if actually that happens in your brain and you generate a bubble of nitrogen that is large enough, you can get an ar arterial embolism and die from it. So, so that's, uh, that's why people recommend uh, that when you're scuba diving and you have to come back to the surface, you have to do it slowly so that you give time for these gases to release really smoothly and no, no big bubbles are formed that can actually kill you. Okay, the last uh, application that we're going to talk about actually has to, has to do with uh, the current epidemic of COVID-19 and that is pneumonia. All right, so let's see how uh, this, this applies also to real life, right? So uh, this is the barrier between your blood and uh, air in your uh, alveoli. Right, so this, this is at the, uh, in your lungs, right? So what happens here is that uh, blood is deficient in oxygen. The arterial blood that you're returning uh, is deficient in, in oxygen. And of course, the environment of your lungs is, is uh, high in a concentration of oxygen, right? So Henry's law tells you that there's going to be some oxygen being dissolved in blood. And that happens, right? So again, that is controlled by, by Henry's law. But the problem is that this exchange or this transfer of oxygen from your alveoli into your blood uh, has to be relatively quick, right? So you have about a quarter of a second uh, to be able to, to promote whatever Henry's law is telling you. Okay, so that's fine, and mo generally people can do this and have high uh, oxygen saturations. But when you get pneumonia, and pneumonia is a condition that you can develop from COVID-19, what happens is that there's an inflammation of this barrier. You actually start to accumulate fluids and then what happens is that uh, this transfer of oxygen that is uh, governed by Henry's law actually is not very effective, right? So this is not a thermodynamic problem, it's a kinetic problem, right? When you have that inflammation, there has to be a mechanism that transfers oxygen from air into your blood, but that is impaired, right? There's, there's an inflammation, there's this uh, fluid accumulation to, in that lining uh, between the blood and, and, the, and the air. Right, and what happens then is that oxygen just doesn't have enough time to flow from air uh, to your blood and you become oxygen starved. Right, so this is the whole problem with the ventilators. Well, the only thing that you're doing with a ventilator is you're uh, increasing here the partial pressure of O2 so that you actually are able to drive more and more and more oxygen uh, uh, in your blood because again, people who have this pneumonia are oxygen starved and that's, that can kill you. Right, so again, with ventilators, what you actually do is you simply uh, try to uh, help out all of it with, with, uh, with Henry's law, right, by increasing that concentration of, of uh, uh, oxygen here so that you can increase that concentration of oxygen in the blood. Okay, so this is both an, a thermodynamic and a kinetic issue, right? The kinetics, what you're hoping is that, is that you can kind of drive uh, quicker that oxygen from the alveoli into your blood and also with Henry's law, what you're trying uh, thermodynamically, what you're trying to do is if you increase the concentration of the partial pressure of O2, that you might be able to get a larger concentration of oxygen in your blood. Okay, so in this video, we have seen a few applications of Henry's law. 
uh, in real life and then in the next video we're going to take this knowledge and see if we can come up with a way to write the chemical potential for uh, a solute in an ideal valid solution uh, with that Henry's law.